I'm uh, Tim Matthews. I'm the head of the brewing operations at Oscar Blues. We are uh, releasing our brand new IPA, Oscar Blues IPA. Oscar Blues IPA is a, a journey we've been doing a lot in investigations on malt and hops and, uh, and yeast and also water, so all the different components of what makes beer. And we felt the timing was right to just release a thoroughbred IPA that helped us express everything we've learned about all of those different components of the beer. I'm Chad Malis at Oscar Blues Brewery and uh, we're here kind of celebrating the uh, first Oscar Blues IPA to hit cans. Making pallets and getting ready to put it on trucks to take cans to 44 states. Well, I think we're a, we're a brewery that is known for you know using hops in, in a good way and we've never really had a traditional IPA on the market you know I think a lot of people would say that Dale's pale ale pushes that boundary between pale ale and an IPA um, and we certainly have some other hoppy beers. The great thing about making a beer is working with your growers and suppliers the entire supply chain from dirt to glass and it's been an incredible experience working with uh, the growers down in Australia and the suppliers both there and in here. I think right now um, we're kind of kind of coming full circle and wanting to make a beer that's drinkable, um, has great mouthfeel, and really um, accentuates that hop aroma and taste that that uh, this IPA is putting out there. And it's it's exciting to kind of come full circle and put Oscar Blues IPA, you know, in beer drinkers' hands. It's common to hear from so many that football is a way of life. However, this group of players definitely see football in a different light. Richard Harvey, 12-year NFL veteran, owner of the Breakout Football Academy in Denver, and football operations consultant for the Athletics and Beyond program. For me, it's about the experience and what uh, I've gained from the opportunities presented. And these kids are getting an opportunity to learn the game, academically as well as athletically. Hey! Basically, it's not just about football. They help you with academics, SAT, ACT. A and B mentors like Justin Adams and Richard Harvey leverage their football backgrounds and life experiences to help grow the minds and behaviors of young men. I think you starting with the education and starting with knowledge and starting with uh, stamping out ignorance and bigotry and hatred and all of those things that society's ills we can eliminate just by having a knowledge base and having uh, an ability to listen. Well, the biggest thing is number one, you have to be, you know, you want to be tough on a kid, but you also want to care. Set it. There's, there's somebody there who says, hey, you need to catch the ball like this or do this, that, and the other. And there's times where it's just like, all right, come on now, you know, you know what you did wrong. Now let me show you something as well that you may not have been aware of. Coaches and mentors are aware it's their respectful and credible connection with A and B kids that is key to delivering the messages. I listen to them because they've been there and done that and now they're trying to help me get there. They're great leaders. They're a big role model to me. They're just amazing. One of the things that they really stressed was taking care of your business in the classroom. If you don't have the grades, it doesn't matter how good you are. So being the student comes first. And even if we play football in college and we don't go to the next level, then we still have our education to fall back on. You faced adversity and you did good. Devon Thornton played the game, earned his degree as a working professional, and volunteers his time for kids he used to be so they know there's more. We're showing them that they put on their pants the same way as you, and we're showing them that there is more to the world than Colorado. I'm holding you accountable to be a leader. It's continuous, it's hard, and it's successful. But if you don't work hard, if you don't continue to work hard, then you will just be this regular person making excuses for yourself. It's worth it. I've been there, done that. It's worth it on the back end. I can say it with confidence. A telling sign of A and B success, the seniors and graduates who keep coming back. A and B gives a lot of great opportunities to get your name out there. That really improve yourself as an individual. It gave me more confidence in myself and coming back here and knowing I can dominate.
I'm John Dillon, I started in Neglected Productions, and I'm working with Left Hand to host the second annual Metal Festival. We've got four bands from all over Colorado, Denver, Mead, Colorado Springs. Today we've got uh, Circle Number Dot just ended. We got Controlled Demise coming up next. Helloboros is after them. And then my friends from Mead, Quick Victim, are playing again this year. We got 15 artists here performing live, live glass blowing, a lot of really cool stuff going on. Sponsoring local metal, trying to get uh, local metal artists and artists in, in more involved in the community and you know getting the awareness back. In, in Longmont that there are still metal artists out there and still artists that love to perform live and that, are, that aren't getting the attention that they need. Rock and roll, thanks for being out. We have a long tradition of great athletics at Longmont High School and Sydney brings that competitive edge, a tremendous degree of athleticism and a real commitment to, to playing the sport and, and playing it at a very high level. She brings leadership, she brings, um, she brings a voice, uh, she brings some incredible rebounding. She brings um, energy, um, competitiveness, um, a, will, a will to win. Um, she just likes to compete. And compete is what the Longmont senior has done. A three-sport athlete, Sydney Wetterstrom has dominated the high school sports scene since her freshman year in track, basketball, and volleyball. Being a multi-sport athlete is just makes you well-rounded, prevents you from injury, and um, just enhances your com competitiveness or your athletic ability on the court. Throughout her time at Longmont, Wetterstrom is living proof that you do not need to specialize in one sport to succeed. I, don't know, I feel like I'm a prime example of that. I haven't specialized my whole life. I've done multiple sports or I, and even if it's not a sport that I compete in a season, I'm always playing it. It's really important to do multiple sports to improve and just so you have fun. Like you shouldn't be doing a sport because like it's paying for your college. Like that happens with some where like, I'm only doing a sport so it pays for college. I'm doing a sport because I want to continue playing. I want to excel. The senior has led Trojan Volleyball to the postseason the past four years, an achievement that drew the interest of the University of Michigan, which is where Wetterstrom will continue her volleyball career next year. Volleyball will have, like in college, I had more opportunity. And then after college, there's a lot of opportunity that you can play professionally or and you can coach and I think that was just my passion for volleyball because it is such um, an intense sport it's different from basketball because like basketball has this intensity and it's very physical and volleyball is more kind of more finesse and it can be physical if you play at the higher levels and I just I just felt volleyball was kind of where I could excel and basketball I've played since fifth, no since I was five so it's not that I was tired of basketball, but I just had more opportunities and more offers. Sydney is a strategist. She looks for an, any opportunity or any way to gain advantage, not only with the other team, but she also, um, she also looks at any tendencies 
that will give us an advantage. And she can um, not only dissect a defense, but really look at each player and see what their strengths and weaknesses are. And that's such a benefit to have out on the court. To coach somebody like Sydney is, is a joy because you know that every night she's going to compete for the team. And you don't have to think, is she going to show up or not, or at what level? You know, she's always going to bring um, a great game. And uh, so it's a consistent outing that I always know that's going to be there. With Sydney being a multi-sport athlete, we as coaches know that uh, there are, there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of crossover with rebounding and blocking, with spike approaches and with layups. And we have a solid athlete that can perform those skills on the court. Um, on a good day and a bad day, she's still one of those, the very best players that we put out there. With accomplishments very few high school athletes can match, Sydney Wedderstrom is quick to give credit to the support of her family. My grandpa really taught me at a young age that the off season and what you do off the court will really help you on the court. We would always plan out what we would do with sticky notes and saying this is the goal but then how are you going to reach that goal? Okay, she can succeed in any sport that she you know that she's in now, whether it be track and field, uh, volleyball, basketball. And she'll no doubt be on that list when it comes time to to put out the uh, top basketball players in this state and um, with her com competitiveness on the on in track and field as well I feel like um, like Sydney wants to leave a legacy, a legacy of, of commitment and of competitiveness and of course her athleticism. Detail oriented um, drills and um, skills really propel you into the next level because if you can do this perfectly at one level then if it's faster and if it's quicker at the next level those skills and are going to transfer. I'm Amon Johnson from Greenwood Village, Colorado. I play receiver for the Cherry Creek Bruins. My strengths are my hands. I can't stand dropping balls, and I'm smooth in my routes and getting off the press. It's important for me to get good grades because it separates me as a student athlete. Um, I'm gonna be on your hip throughout every, the practices, all practices. Um, in the games, asking you questions, trying to get better for myself and the team. I'm going to bring work ethic in the classroom, on the field, off the field, everywhere. I volunteered in the community to give back. I want to help others and give them, like, hope. the Metro State play host to the Ore Diggers. He scored 43 points, has averaged six rebounds in those games. Boy, has he been good. Averaging 18 points per game, yeah, that's pretty good. This team is loaded with guys that can score. You just want to get off on a great start. Three minutes, 21 seconds into the contest. Oh, love it. The quick drive, and they give Silla the opportunity to get the drive and uh, the layup. And Silla, Denver South product. Great feed from D'Arietta and took it right to the rack. Right handed up. Quarter action, the home team, CSU Pueblo, with a 7-5 lead. Ashley Piper just too physical on that right, and doing a great job of knocking it down. You get the feeling it's coming. It's coming, and you just feel like it's coming because they're playing better defense. Uh, Clavel drives, look at this, magnificent move. And this is kind of where everything started. You start down low, you go and attack the basket. Picked up and continued to play as good as he's been playing over the last three weeks. But then there was a lull defensively where they got in some trouble and couldn't make the right plays. They kept their bigs out of the game. Their bigs couldn't get involved. And that's what had them early 
in the lead. But once UNC took over, it, it was tough for them to get back in. Four blocks in the contest, and uh, Hill has a couple as well. He's just patient. He just kind of times it all up. Doesn't ever get out of control. You see Hill there with the nice throw. But he's super patient and is always in balance. So see Jordan Davis down the lane, and then there's Wilson drawing the double team, getting it over to Evans. But Wilson's really been the story. Again, six of seven from the floor. The kid out of Los Angeles has now scored in double figures in all 13 games here this season. And the score record. There's a three right there. And again, Evans is a kid who is not a shooter. At all. They start extending that defense, that pressure defense. So then the good looks start shutting down a little bit for the Bears. Uh, big push going into that second half. He, he really did a nice job. Stayed patient, let the game come to him. Bregan with a nice drive. And they got Biggs involved early. Poor Justin Adams and the rest of our crew. I'm Josh Howe saying good night from Lakewood. The Mavericks win their second straight.